I'm Leon Todd for G66. Welcome to another Tuesday Tone Tip. On today's video, I want to revisit two of my favorite effect blocks in the Axe FX, the FM9 and the FM3. I'm talking about the multi-tap delay and the plex delay block. I'm going to give you four of my favorite combinations using the stock types that come included in the blocks. Before we do that, I have a really simple preset going on here, just an input block into an amp and cab block. I've got the Cameron CCV2A with the gain and the input trim quite low. I'm using my go-to LT TV Mix 7 IR, usual thing that you hear on all of these videos, low cut at 80 hertz, high cut at 8K. The cat is munching on some biscuits in the background and providing some extra ambience there. Then I've connected a multi-tap delay and a plex delay in parallel here. You can connect them in series if you enjoy that particular configuration, but as always remember, when running blocks in parallel, set the mix to 100%, set the bypass mode to either mute effects in or mute in, and then use either the input gain or the level control to control the amount of wet signal in there. So that's how I've set it up. Let's just hear the dry sound. I am on the split bridge pickup of this PRS DGT. Then I'm gonna bring in the detuned space type in the plex delay block for some ambience and the quad chorus in the multi-tap delay block just to add some girth on here. This is a pretty nice way to just thicken up a rhythm guitar tone. <laughs> That serves as a great up first example of how versatile these blocks are because while they're called the multi-tap delay and the plex delay i'm using the plex for a reverb style sound in there and i'm using the delay for a chorus style sound in there let's head over to scene two now because we'll do some variations on this i'm going to use the plex delay now for like a combo of reverb and delay so i'm using the echo hall type over here and then in the multi-tap delay block, I'm using this aerosol type, which has some feedback on the delay lines. So it's essentially creating a quad flanger. Now I'm gonna to go to the middle position on this guitar just for a little bit more twang and quack out of it. Let's have a listen to what this quad flanger adds to the tone, and then I'll bring in the reverb and delay combo from the plex delay. So let's go with that. <laughs>
It's like having a portal straight into that early 80s Alex Lifeson tone on there. Essentially, it's a variation on the theme we established in scene one, where we've got the plex delay providing ambience and the multi-tap delay providing modulation. In this next setup, we're going to change things up a little bit. We're going to go with the stereo shadows type in the multi-tap delay, which is very much inspired by 60s echo machines. I'll let you hear that in just a second on its own. Then we're going to use the subtone shimmer in the plex delay block. So the plex delay can do echoes, massive reverb sounds, pitch shifted reverb. So you can do your kind of traditional octave up shimmers, but I really like varying that up and rather than use the typical shimmer sound, which is an octave up, using the subtone shimmer, which gives you an octave below. So we'll start with the stereo shadows for these kind of shorter stereo echoes on here. You can see this is kind of like a slapback section on delay three and four, and we have some slightly longer rhythmic echoes in here. Sounds like this. <laughs> combination of a very vintage sounding delay with a very modern sounding pitch shifted reverb on there. It's like a best of both worlds approach. If you did want to go for the traditional octave up shimmer on here, there's several types on here. I really like the standard shimmer verb over here, but if you're running low on CPU, you can use the Econo Shimmer 1 or 2 over here. There's some really, really crazy ones as well, like the Cacophonizer and the Bronze Harps up here. But let's hear standard shimmer verb. I'm going to turn the shimmer intensity up to about 6. I'll change the direction to reverse on here. I'll crank the decay time and the reverb size up a little bit. And I'll use a little bit of a high cut in here because I like that with these kind of shimmer effects. Don't be afraid to go to around three or four K on there. So let's have a listen to what this does now. two variations on this last example because it is one of my favorite plex and multi-tap delay combinations for lead tones we're going to go with the occult verb one in the plex delay block which is going to give us a glorious late 80s style reverb on there it's absolutely going to drench our tone but the thing that I like about using the plex delay for reverb is it doesn't kind of wash everything away in there. You can still hear the clarity in your notes. Then I'm going to use one of two things. I'm going to start with the PCM circular delay type in here for a lexicon style circular delay. And then we'll change over to the Aurora delay type, which will give you the Andy Timmons 
halo pedal effect in there. So let's just hear each of these on their own and then in combination. Maybe we'll start with the circular delay. <laughs> this all sounds too over the top to you, you don't have to run it as wet as I do. I always err on the side of, you know, being a little bit over the top if I have to choose between too wet and too dry. But of course, you can just lower the input gain amount on all of these and just add a little sprinkle if you would like it to your tone. Of course, I just put this preset together. I've made it really simple to demonstrate how powerful and versatile these blocks are, but you can run these with any combination of blocks that you like in your fractal. It's all up to your own personal taste and the tones that you were chasing. Hopefully I've demonstrated just how powerful and versatile these are though. We heard echo, reverb, stereo panning effects, modulation. We had chorus and flanger in there. We had some really great combinations just from these two blocks and just because they say delay at the end of each of them. Plex delay, multi-tap delay does not mean that you just have to use them for echo style effects. And furthermore, there are so many other types in each of these blocks. For example, look at the Plex delay block in there. You've got 44 different types to play around with. And in the multi-tap delay, you have another 34 in there. I would highly encourage you to experiment with these and use them in your own presets. If you've got any other questions, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you all next week.